Bangladesh has had to confront several hurdles since its founding in 1971. From hunger and poverty to insufficient power supply and rising radicalism, Bangladesh has faced and continues to face many challenges. Dhaka, the mega city and country's capital, however, has experienced an exceptional period of economic growth in the last few years under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Let's take a closer look at the South Asian nation boasting one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Twenty twenty two finished with a bang in Dhaka, with the country's very first metro rail opening. Large numbers of commuters were seen lining up in front of the metro stations in Uttara and Agargaon, all eager to ride. With the newly inaugurated metro train service, the recently opened Padma Bridge, and the ongoing construction of a new airport terminal. Bangladesh is experiencing a period of growth and excitement. The nation is establishing and implementing the critical infrastructure needed to move into a new era of modernization. Our family is here. Alhamdulillah, good afternoon. Good morning, class. Manoniya Pradhan Mandir ke onik onik dunno baat ei udog ne arjunno. Amra Alhamdulillah, good. Bangladesh is experiencing major economic advancement and is on track to graduate from the United Nations Least Developed Countries list by 2026. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and her political party, the Awami League, have been in power since 2009. Under her leadership, the country has achieved many economic milestones and human development also continues to improve. However, Bangladesh still has many challenges she must face. The fight against radical Islamists still rages, for example as they continue to pose a significant threat to the country's economic growth and modernization. 2022 proved to be a year of many achievements across various sectors for Bangladesh, as the country registered a whopping growth of 7.2% amid a global slowdown. It is also noteworthy that Bangladesh's march towards economic prosperity has always been aided by its all-weather friend, India. I really thanks to Prime Minister Modi to take this initiative, and that way he, you know, contributed vaccine to not only Bangladesh also some South Asian countries, and it is really very very helpful. India's investments and bilateral trade have greatly benefited its neighbor. Both countries not only share physical borders, but many cultural similarities as well. As a result, significant progress has been made in recent years in enhancing the connectivity between New Delhi and Dhaka. The relationship between India and Bangladesh not only benefits the two countries, but also plays a crucial role for the political and economic stability of the region. New Delhi and Dhaka have already stated that they would step up cooperation to counter terrorism, violent extremism, and radicalization in the subcontinent. Delhi's commitment to support Dhaka is critical for a peaceful and stable South Asia. The scenes in Karachi are devastating. 
with many queuing for hours for a bag of subsidized wheat flour. With the price of a 10 kg bag of flour reaching 1600 Pakistani rupees, approximately 7 USD, a great many of Pakistani citizens can no longer afford to buy basic food necessities from shops. Recently, the Pakistani Prime Minister, Shabazz Sharif, too acknowledged the dire situation his country had gotten itself into and said that it was a matter of shame that a nuclear power had to resort to begging. <laughs> Pakistan's citizens continue to suffer due to the multitude of crises the Islamic nation has been facing. Political volatility, rising food inflation, a worsening economic crisis, and devastating flooding have all combined to put Pakistan on the verge of collapse. According to the State Bank of Pakistan, the country's foreign exchange reserves have fallen to 4.3 billion USD, the lowest level since February of 2014. Containers of food items, medicines, and other goods remain stuck at ports across the country due to the rapidly depleting foreign exchange, leading to a shortage of essential goods. गवर्नमेंट से मैं यही कह सकता हूं कि जो ऐसी चीजें हैं जो गाड़ियां बड़ी-बड़ी बड़े लोग जो अमीर लोग लेते हैं उनके रेट बढ़ाओ आटे में क्या रेट बढ़ा रहे हो यार आटे अब कर्जा लेके कहीं से भी आटा ले आओ दूसरी चीजों पे आप टैक्स लगाओ कुछ भी करो जो बड़े लोग हैं वो कर सकते हैं अभी आटे में बढ़ा रहे हो अमीरों को तो उनको तो परेशानी है परेशानी तो हमें ही हो रही है ना अब आटा सस्ता करो बाकी चीजें बाढ़ में जाए जो करनी है वो करो अकॉर्डिंग टू द वर्ल्ड बैंक Pakistan's economy is expected to grow by only 2% in the current fiscal year. It is expected that poverty in the poorest regions of Pakistan will worsen. Further, the national poverty rate may increase by 2.5 to 4 percentage points, pushing between 5.8 and 9 million people into poverty. The struggle for Pakistanis seems infinite as macroeconomic risks in the country remain high and uncompromising. A large current account deficit, high public debt, and a lower demand from its traditional export markets continue to keep Pakistan on the edge of complete collapse.